13 and a half laps of the track and commentating with me the national coach Archie Marshall O'Reilly in red and O'Reilly round the outside and straight into the lead but it's a long race Archie what will his tactics be I think he wants to control the race right from the start and stamp his authority in these championships in the first final but I think Horsepool will try to get in there quick to upset him keep the race slow Horsepool at the back at the moment wearing number two and making a move on the outside in the blue helmet so Horsepool takes the lead and you think now he'll slow it down I think he'll try and control it from the front and try and stop Willie's straight pattern working and now making a move on the white still very much early stages Julian Green and he's overtaken by Pete Worth Pete Worth prefers to go to the front he doesn't like to sit in and get in trouble at the back but I think he's going to be at class here once the jump comes and when do you expect them to make that final move? I don't think O'Reilly will go before five to go in. I think the rest will just be waiting in his move because they can't outrun him, so they'll have to go with his jump. So then, at the moment, Pete Worth in front. Julian Green in the white helmet second. Stuart Horsepool third and O'Reilly fourth. And here comes Julian Green making his move with eight laps to go. Julian's trying to impress the selectors here, but he's going to tail off near the end because he doesn't have the stamina to hold this up seven to go then and julian green about five meters in front from stuart horsepool o'reilly tucked in third nice shot of them around the bend you can see the acceleration away yeah ellis is sitting in there nice in skating circles ellis is known as the head waiter never moves before anybody else always waiting to lay in ian ellis from nottingham highly rated here just 19 years old in green in fourth place tracking o'reilly but it's still Green first, Horsepool second. O'Reilly seemed to stumble a little there, third, but is okay. And there's Ellis tucked in right behind him. Four to go. And out into the lead now goes Wilf O'Reilly. Suddenly it's there. All the acceleration in the world, all the power under his feet. He's got everything. And quickly opens up a seven, eight meter gap. Horsepool trying to go with him. Tracked by Ian Ellis. Julian Green out now, two laps to go. Horse pool closing the track down to stop Ellis getting through. No way through for Ellis, he's stuck in thug. So out it goes then into the final lap and Wilf O'Reilly looks behind, he's a comfortable winner. Who's gonna be second? At the moment it looks like Stuart Horsepool being tracked by Ian Ellis. Desperately close at the line, but it looks as if Stuart Horsepool just got it from Ian Ellis. A fine race, no doubt about the winner though. And here's where O'Reilly took control with about three laps to go. Yeah, Willie does this great. He doesn't pick a place to overtake. He just makes a run at the people in front of him and decides at the very last second where the space is and jumps for it. Right round the outside of two skaters. Very difficult manoeuvre. And from then on, there was only one winner. O'Reilly stamping his authority on this event at the very start. A class act Olympic champion. So O'Reilly wins the first of the four events. He'll take part in this afternoon. He takes five points. Stuart Horsepool, three for being second. Ian Ellis, two for third place. And Julian Green, one for fourth. Now then, to the women's 1,000 metres. And after the 1,500, Alea Hopcroft, the favourite from Aldwych, leads, followed by last year's runners-up, Alison Birch from Altrincham. Alea, with Karen out, it makes you the favourite for these championships. Does that put pressure on you? Yeah, it does put a lot of pressure on me because everyone's expecting me to win really easy. Um, but, I mean, there's uh, Alison Birch, people like that, they're chasing right on the tail, so... How much would it mean to you to win this? I mean, quite a lot. I've trained quite, quite hard this season and through the summer, so it would mean a lot to me. You train every day? Nearly every day, yeah. I have a couple of days off here and there. Now, you've got to be fast, obviously, but also got to be strong because it's exhausting. Yeah, I mean, strength is a lot of it. I mean, over 1,500 and 1,000, you need the strength, and then you need the, the sprint work for the fives. Confident? Fairly. <laughs> and here's the lineup. There's Alea from Aldwych, third last year. Marina Wilson from Nottingham in the green helmet. And Shirley Mills from Peterborough in white. Alison Birch, last year's runner-up, in black. And here it is, the 1,000 metres nine laps of the track and Alea Hopcroft the favorite in red Alea wants to control this race from the front right away 
but I know Allison's got an intent to try and get in there and stop her doing it. Alison Birch then leading at the moment. Alea Hopcroft on the outside in the red helmet, in the white Shirley Mills in third place, and at the back Marina Wilson. But now the favourite making a move, stepping up the pace. Alea is not going to let them settle. She's going to make a better fitness pay here, and she's going to put them under pressure from the start. So Alea Hopcroft with seven to go, followed by Alison Birch, and then a gap developing already about 10, 15 metres to Shirley Mills and then to Marina Wilson. The race between these two. Alea skating very well, very good technically, putting the pressure on Alison, who's wandering a bit on the track. So Alea Hopcroft first, Alison Birch second. Is she getting any kind of shield there behind? She's trying hard, but she's stretched all the time by the pace Alea's putting up. I think Alison's just hoping to hang on and look for a mistake by Leah now. That's her best hope. Just four to go now. And no change. Alea Hopcroft looking in control. Alison Birch just looking around the corner to see if there's an opening and there isn't. Alison's unable to hold the corner tight coming out, so there's no space for her to overtake, even if she finds the strength. Alea's just skating a perfect track and skating a great race. Two laps to go now. And another spurt here from Alea Hopcroft, but Alison Burt staying with her. The pressure's going to tell now, Alea's going to start to go away with a greater strength and fitness. And sure enough, a gap is starting to open, about three, four metres, and she's going away all the time now. And Alea Hopcroft stretching out for what should be her second victory. Alea Hopcroft crosses the line first. Alison Birch second. And Alea Hopcroft now moves up to 10 points with two successive victories, and here she is taking the lead. Here we see all Aaliyah's hard work this year in this jump. She decides the pace is too slow, she wants to put the pressure on, and she just moves forward, using her strength to open up the pack. And the back two just can't live with it. Good stride pattern up the straight, working hard into the bend and just powering out of it. Great skating. So it was the power in the end that told. Alea Hopcroft takes another five points. Alison Bertram Altrium takes three. Marina Wilson two. And Shirley Mills one. So Alea Hopcroft now looking in control. Ten points. Alison Birch six. And with just one event to go, Alea can just be first, second, or third in the final event to win the overall title. Now we turn to the men again and there's the position after the 1500 meters Wilfo Riley in the lead Stuart Horsepool second Ian Ellis third Julian Green fourth the men's 500 meters final Ian Ellis from Nottingham in green Wilf O'Reilly from Birmingham in red Stuart Horsepool runner up at the moment from Nottingham in blue and Pete Worth from Nottingham in black and Phil Topham also from Nottingham in yellow so four Nottingham skaters here up against Wilf O'Reilly. And a full start there. Yeah, Phil Topham was moving all the time. His arm's moving, as you see, and that's throwing everybody else off. Looks like two arms moving. Phil Topham in yellow and also in black, Pete Worth. Yeah, but Phil started it. Phil's the old head in the race, and he's trying to upset the other skaters. This a second full start. What's the ruling on this? There seems to be some problem. I think the problem's starting really because O'Reilly's forcing everybody up in the inside and closing them all up. He's using his head here. Uh, but they've got to watch it now. Two false starts and you're out. Topham's moved again. There's going to be a problem here. Topham in the yellow. O'Reilly in red. And again it Topham, happened. Yeah. Topham and Horsepool are moving all the time there. Topham seemed to put his hand down and then Horsepool went. Yeah. And it looks like the officials have spotted it and he's out of the race. Phil Topham disqualified in this 500 metres. It's very sad for Phil because he was really looking forward to that race. And O'Reilly goes straight out. Four and a half laps here, so no messing about. O'Reilly first. Ian Ellis second. And Ellis tracking O'Reilly and hoping for some kind of mistake. He can't hope to overpower him. Ellis has to chase O'Reilly and go for it here. He's got a tendency to settle for second. And unfortunately, it looks as if he's doing that. You see, he's not working as hard as Wally up the straights. Pete Worth in the black helmet third. Stuart Horsball right back in fourth place. They're strung out now, and O'Reilly leads with two to go. 
Willie will start easing off now. He knows he's got it sewing up. He'll just concentrate and stay on his feet. Final lap, O'Reilly leads and looking pretty comfortable. And in second place, Ian Ellis. Third place, Pete Worth. Stuart Horsepool at the back. O'Reilly crosses the line. The British record, 44.8. So he's nearly four seconds outside that. But it's a pretty slow track here, and O'Reilly acknowledges the applause. Here he is, the greatest starter in the world. I know every other nation studies his starts because they just can't match him. And he shows all his power getting off the line just to destroy the field in the first corner. And from then on, O'Reilly powered home. Another five points to the boy from Birmingham. Ian Ellis in second place, Pete Worth third, Stuart Horsepool fourth. So overall, it means that O'Reilly has stretched his lead. He now has 10. Ian Ellis has moved into second. Stuart Horsepool third and Pete Worth fourth. We're going to be back with more from the British Ice Speed after this break. Yes, welcome back to the British Ice Speed Championships here at Richmond. As you can see, the ice at the moment being melted. Yes, they're appearing the hole made in the last race. They've packed it with slush and water and they're doing an instant freeze with Freon gas. Plenty to look forward to, of course. O'Reilly back in action twice more, and the cracks being levelled out there. As you can see, the skaters, as well as being great competitors, have got a sense of humour, and there the extraneous water being brushed away. Important to get that off the ice. It's very dangerous if too much water's lying in the bins. Well, now we're going to move on to the Pee Wees event, those for the competitors 12 years old and under. And there's the situation after two events. Alistair Swain leads from Nottingham. Then Jason Ship from Peterborough, Dominic Easy, and James Golding. This is the 400 metres, the final event for the Peewees, three and a half laps. Alistair Swain, there he is from Nottingham, in the lead at the moment. Jason Ship from Peterborough is second. Then Jonathan Cave from Peterborough in the white helmet, and Simon Lochran from Oldwich in the red. 400 metres, three and a half laps of the track. And it should be between Swain in the green helmet and Ship in the black. And it's Ship who takes the lead at the moment. Swain's had a great year this year and he's going again expect him to win this race. He's the most powerful of the two. And it is Swain who takes the lead at the moment. Swain leads from Ship, but a bad fall there and over goes Jonathan Cave. Terrible fall. Swain's recovered well, but Jonathan Cave's down. And he looks pretty badly injured, but it's left the race absolutely in the pocket of Jason Ship. He could never have thought he's had such an easy time. Past he goes over the fallen Jonathan Cave. He looks in a bad way, and he can relax now. Second place, Simon Lochran. Alistair Swain's got up, and he'll be third. But he crosses the line, does Jason, and wins the 400 metres. A great roar, but it's a rather hollow victory, and there... I'm afraid in tears, Jonathan Cave. Definitely the worst fall we've seen in these championships so far. And it's a shame for Jonathan. He just, there's nothing he could do to go out the way of the fallen skater. But fortunately, his protective equipment saved him from any serious damage, I hope. There it is. Terrible trip. And the legs bang down, as did the shoulder. This is a difficult time for the referees. They're trying to decide whether they should stop the race or let it run. In this case, they've made the right decision to let the race run. And Jonathan seems to be OK now. And he's rubbing a shoulder there, but I should think there's hardly a part of his body that doesn't hurt. No, every bit got a bang there. But like I say, the knee pads and the helmet and the gloves have all helped to protect him from any serious damage, which is important. So there's a very brave 12-year-old indeed. Jonathan Cave moves round to collect one point for being fourth. Collects to a lot of admiration from all the spectators here at Richmond. There's the situation there. Jason Ship wins, takes the five points. Simon Lochran finished second. Only two points for Alistair Swain. And Jonathan Cave gets one. So the final positions, Alistair Swain just holds on to the title. Jason Ship is second and joint third, Dominic Easy and Simon Lockburn. So a very proud moment there for a talented young man, Alistair Swain, the winner. And now we move to the juveniles, the 14s and under, and Jamie Fern, last year's champion, has a convincing lead over Justin Grimes with Paul Mitchell 
in third place. The 800 meters. There's Jamie Fern from Nottingham. Anthony Balchin, second last year from Nottingham. Craig Perkins from Aldwych in blue. Justin Grimes, second at the moment from Aldwych in red. And Paul Mitchell from Peterborough, who's third at the moment in black. The juvenile 800 metres, seven and a half laps of the track. A little bit of nervousness at the start, but they're off. Watch out for Jamie Fern in green, and straight away, a convincing start for Jamie. Yes, he's in a different class altogether. He definitely is. He's the number one juvenile in the world right now. And he just seems to get better all the time. Anthony Balchin in second place from Nottingham. Anthony trains with Jamie, but it's always a hard going for him to keep up with him. Justin Grimes, who's lying in second place overall at the moment, lying in third in this race, but it looks pretty easy for Jamie Fern. How does he rank with the seniors, for example? Can he compete with those? Yes, very much so. He's been in Nottingham senior team this year already. I'm in the national squad, he works well with the seniors. So with four to go, Jamie Fern has around seven or eight metre lead over Anthony Balchin. And a fall there for Paul Mitchell. <laughs> what a brave attempt to get up quickly. He worked hard at it, he just couldn't catch his edge. The big surprise this year of the championships in this age group was Justin Grimes of Aldwych. This is his first year speed skating and he's just a tremendous prospect. So, Jamie laps poor Paul Mitchell and it looks like Justin Grimes has taken over second place into the last lap. And Jamie Fern looks so comfortable in the lead. Justin Grimes in second place, Anthony Balch in third. And round the final bend, and Jamie Fern wins comfortably in a pretty good time, just a second outside the British record, and this on a difficult track. So Jamie Fern the winner, and he was there right from the very start. Fantastic technique, Jamie. I mean, he has it all. We don't have to teach him much because it just comes naturally to him. And there's Paul Mitchell struggling away to get back on terms with his skates. But you're looking there at a very fine prospect indeed, Jamie Fern. Just 14 years old. And there he takes five points. Justin Grimes, three. Anthony Balchin, two. And Craig Perkins, one. And the final Justin result then, a convincing win for Anthony Jamie Balchin. Fern from Nottingham. Justin Grimes takes second place. Anthony Balchin, third. Paul Mitchell, four. And they're a very proud and talented 14-year-old Jamie Fern. And now we move on to the juniors. After 800 metres, there's the position. Matthew Jasper and Gary Noble joint first. Then Nicky Gooch from Aldwych. Chris Brooks in fourth place. The 1,000 metres, Kevin Bushell from Aldwych in yellow. Then Chris Brooks from Nottingham in green. The joint leaders now, Gary Noble from Altrincham in blue and Matthew Jasper from Nottingham in orange. Finally, in third place at the moment, Nicky Gooch from Aldwych in red. This then, the 1,000 metres, the final event of the juniors. Nine laps of the track. And straight into the lead goes the favourite, Matthew Jasper, and Gary Noble in the blue helmet in second place. Gary's going to track Matthew all the way here and try and pip him at the end because it's between these two for the title. Nicky Gooch in third place in the red helmet. And over there goes Chris Brooks from Nottingham. So he's out of the race. This is great skating from Nicky Gooch. It's only six weeks since he broke his collarbone. And he's determined to show something here in front of his home fans. So all Jasper or Noble have to do is beat each other. They don't have to worry about Nicky Gooch. So they're really more aware of each other than the man in front. But it's Nicky Gooch from Aldwych in the lead. Then Matthew Jasper. And then Gary Noble. I think Jasper's going to try and get in front of Gooch and put Gooch between him and Noble. I don't know if he's going to manage it, though, because Nicky's skating a good track here. There's Matt making his move. So Matthew Jasper takes the lead. Nicky Gooch second. Gary Noble third. Three to go. And Jasper in the lead. Nicky Gooch staying well. And in fact, Nicky Gooch takes over the lead. There goes Nicky Gooch now. Matthew Jasper second. Gary Noble third. 
Jasper's going to try and skate tight here and hold Noble back. He's not even going to attempt to go back into the lead. Gooch first, Matthew Jasper second, Gary Noble third. It's second and third you have to worry about. Nicky Gooch wins. Noble makes a desperate bid on the inside, but he hasn't made it. And Matthew Jasper there congratulates Nicky Gooch, but knows that he has won the British title. Matthew just sitting in here holding the track, trying to block the track from Gary coming through. You see him looking for him. He's got his hand across Gary here. He's maybe a bit lucky to get away with that. There's the winner, Nicky Gooch. Proud moment for him. He takes the 1,000 metres. Matthew Jasper second. That's all he needed to do. Gary Noble third. And Kevin Bushell fourth. And overall, how close it was. Two points between first and third. Jasper wins. Noble second. Nicky Gooch third. Chris Brooks fourth. And there at the top of the rostrum, Matthew Jasper, 16 years old from Nottingham. Pretty relieved, I should think, because it was awfully close. Yeah, it was a bit close for me. I was a bit, bit terrified when I was coming around the finish. thought Nicky was going to slide in front of me, but I wasn't sure, so I, eventually I got it. Did you know going into the race you just had to finish second, and was that your plan? Uh, all I had to do was beat Gary, he's uh, a good skater, but I had to, and I had to beat him. I, I didn't re didn't really matter where I came overall, as long as I had to beat Gary. So that was quite good. Just a chance you might make the team for the World Championships. I hope so. I dearly hope so. It's, it's my ambition. And coming up after the break, Wilfo Riley in the 500 metres. Join us in a couple of minutes. Hello, welcome back to Richmond and the British High Speed Championships. Well, Archie Marshall has been commentating with me this afternoon and is the national coach. Archie, what has Wolf's success meant to the sport? The spin-offs have been incredible. Financially, not as much as we hoped, but at grassroots, they've been tremendous. Kids flocking to the ice rinks to join speeds clubs. Tremendously talented children as well. And uh, just a greater awareness of our sport. More people want to help us get involved. Men, mostly? Unfortunately, yes. We don't seem to be attracting ladies, uh, which is a shame because it is a great sport for ladies and men. And, and young girls in other countries take it up at five and six years of age. Now, Will's done pretty well so far. He says he's his own worst enemy as far as these championships are concerned. Do you see it that way? Yes, but it's an incredible pressure building on him, never getting beaten in these championships. And it's a hard thing for any champion in any sport to carry. And I think he's doing well. Well, he's got two of the four events to go and he's looking pretty comfortable at the moment. He has 10, Ian Ellis has 5, Stuart Horsbull 4, and Pete Worth 3. Now we move on to the 1,000 metres. Julian Green from Birmingham in yellow. There's Wilf, also from Birmingham, in red. Stuart Horsbull lying third at the moment in blue. And in second place, Ian Ellis from Nottingham in green. The men's 1,000 metres then, nine laps of the track. And O'Reilly quite happy to see the rest of them make the move at the start and it's Julian Green leading from Ian Ellis and O'Reilly makes his move but uh, not a significant one yet no and Ellis really wants the tail on this time he's grown in confidence as the championship goes on and I think he's really going to try and have a buzz at O'Reilly this time which would you say was O'Reilly's best event definitely a 500 some people disagree but to me he's untouchable at 500 so out in the lead at the moment goes Stuart Horsepool. What will his tactics be? Stuart wants to keep it slow and bunch up. He likes the rough and tumble, pushing and shoving, because he's still one of the best in the world at that sort of race. So Horsepool in blue leads. And they're making a move now, particularly Julian Green with six to go. Green leads, Horsepool second, O'Reilly third, and Ian Ellis has got tailed off at the back. Nice jump for Julian, but his problem throughout these championships is he seems to tie up a bit once he's going a couple of laps. And I think we'll see that again in another half a lap or so. And Stuart Horsepool making his move on the inside, but O'Reilly counters and O'Reilly takes the lead with three to go. O'Reilly leads then, and already four metres clear. That was significant. Fabulous overtake. Normally O'Reilly could come away with a move like that. But he's in all sorts of trouble at the barrier there. He very nearly went over. Yeah, he just overcorrected a little bit, pulled his hip out the corner. But he's still alive, still well in front. And Ian Ellis has passed them all, all the rest of them to move into second place. And he's beginning to make a move on O'Reilly, but far too late. And I'm afraid he's only his own worst enemy. Stuart Horsepool third, Julian Green at the end. But O'Reilly wins by three or four metres from Ian Ellis, Stuart Horsepool and Julian Green 
dive in for third. O'Reilly last because he was nearly the end of him. Ellis is going to be really disappointed in this race because he should have been in O'Reilly's tail ready for that stumble. But Willie, look at this overtaking here. Tremendous. No space through and round the outside. And he just opens up the gap. Strides out and pushes. So O'Reilly then immediately into a five metre lead, but around the next bend, we had all sorts of problems. Here he is. You see him, he's left his, lifted his hip out the corner. He's up on his toes now, just worrying about getting over the top of that barrier. It's a great recovery. But he saw the funny side of it afterwards, but at that moment, I should think his heart was in his mouth. But O'Reilly has done enough now to win the event. Five more points for him. Horsepool second, Julian Green third. Ian Ellis disqualified in the last lap for charging into Stuart Horsepool. And it means that Wilf O'Reilly can't be beaten now. 15 points, Stuart Horsepool has seven. Ian Ellis in third place at the moment, Julian Green fourth. Now to the ladies' event. There's the position after the 1,000 metres going into the final event. Alea Hopcroft leads and only needs to be first, second or third in this final event to take the ladies' title for the first time. There's Alison Birch, who's in second place from Altrincham. Marina Wilson in green from Nottingham. There's Alea Hopcroft in red from Aldwych, the leader. And Emma Maloney in black from Altrincham. 500 metres, four and a half laps of the track. Alison Birch in yellow. Alea Hopcroft, the leader at the moment, in red. A lot of argy bargy at the start. Yeah, Alea's got herself in a bit of trouble with a bad start there. She'll try and get herself out. But that's Alison moving through into the lead now. So Alison Birch in the yellow helmet from Altrincham in the lead. In black, Emma Maloney. It's Alea in Alison's tail now. Really, Alia has to just sit there and make sure the championship points. The second place here does her and gives her the title. Coming round now with two to go. And it's Alison Birch first. Alea Hopcroft trying to win every single event here. Pride at stake for her. Alia's lining herself up to overtake. She's found the space and she's gone through. So she's through. Alea Hopcroft through. A bit of nudging there. It looked like from Alison Birch, but she's taken over. Alison Birch leads. Alea Hopcroft second, Emma Maloney third, more pushing, but Alison Birch crosses the line first, Alea Hopcroft second, Emma Maloney third, here's the crucial instant now, up on the inside comes Alea Hopcroft. It's a good move by Alea, the space is there, she's going through and at the first block of the corner she's already a couple inches ahead, see her there, Alison starts to lean in on her and there's a slight clash, it's hard to say who's at fault for the clash but it was fair skating from both of them. But it cost Alea Hopcroft the race, but not, it seems, the title. Alea Hopcroft wins the title, although Alison Birch goes on to win this 500 metres. There's some confusion there, and the two of them being called over to see the stewards. Alison Birch saying, you want to see me? No, they don't. They want to see Alea Hopcroft, and it looks like she's been disqualified. This is terrible. It's, it's a hard thing being a referee in any sport, but I feel they've made the wrong decision here. They had to make an instantaneous decision, and for once it's been the wrong one. Poor Alea Hopcroft. Last year she made mistakes, it cost her the title. And this year she's been ruled out by the judges. No wonder she feels emotional. It must be immensely frustrating. So there's the result. Alea Hopcroft disqualified, so five points to Alison Birch. Emma Maloney takes three, Marina Wilson takes two. And overall, it means that Alison Birch has won the title. Alea Hopcroft second, Marina Wilson third, and joint fourth, Emma Maloney and Shirley Mills. So, Alison Birch full of smiles, slightly embarrassed perhaps, but she has won the British Ice Speed Championships for 1989. Congratulations, a bit of a surprise. Yeah, it is, because I didn't expect to win it. Thought I'd just got second. I didn't think anything like that had happened. Talk us through the end of that race and, and what happened as far as you were concerned. Well, I got a bad start, I was one of the last off the start. And then I went a bit of a fly when I went past the first person, she caught my leg. And then after that, I was in the lead for a bit. And then Aaliyah came up the inside. And we were sort of the same going into the bend. And I guess that's why she got disqualified. Great reward for a lot of training. Yeah, <laughs> didn't think I'd win it. British champion, how does that feel? Well, it was a bit lucky, but it feels good. 
Hard luck, you must be very disappointed. You're very disappointed. That's about it, guys. What are your memories of the incident? It was about a lap to go and you just seemed to get tangled up. Um, when I went up the inside, I thought I was clear, but the judges said that I wasn't and I, I knocked her, but that's the judges and they have to go by what they say. Do you feel bitter? Very. They're not going to change their decision, so that's that. Has it hardened your resolve to come back next year and show them? Definitely. I want to prove them next year that I was wrong. So, so determined Alea Hopcroft. Now we move on to the final event of the day. There's the men's position after the 1,000 metres. Just one event to go. Wilf O'Reilly then already champion. And this really an exhibition and a chance to see him in action once again. 3,000 metres, Pete Worth from Nottingham in black. Stuart Horsepool from Nottingham in blue. Wilf O'Reilly, already champion for the seventh time in red. Ian Ellis lying in third place at the moment from Nottingham in green. And Julian Green from Birmingham in yellow. 3,000 metres, 27 laps of the track, O'Reilly in red in the middle. I don't expect it to be a fast race because there's no pressure in Wilt to make it a fast race. Really, he's the only one that can put that kind of speed on over this distance. He'll slow back to even lap shortly. Out into the lead goes Julian Green in the yellow cap, Wilf O'Reilly second and just tucked in behind Green. And then further back, in green, we have Ian Ellis, and in blue, Stuart Horsepool. I know that Ellis's coach, Steve Jaspers, told him he wants to see him do something in this race. He, he feels he's let himself down a bit in a couple of route finals. He wants to see him having a real go at O'Reilly in the last lap of this 3000. And O'Reilly looking around as if this is a training run. How tired will he be at the moment? He'll be relieved because he knows his, the, the title's over, so he'll just be that bit more laid back now. But he, he doesn't like 3,000s. He likes to say he's only got one good 3,000 a year, and he saves that for the World Championship. So right now, all he's thinking is 22 laps to go. Oh, God. Into the lead at the moment goes Ian Ellis, but it's still very much cat and mouse. The important thing here for all these skaters is to try and use as little energy as possible because it's obviously it's going to be a sprint finish. The only one that's maybe not in that position is Pete Worth because he doesn't have a sprint. At some point, possibly, he might take it up and try and see if he can get a gap and get away from them. That's his only hope. Wolf tucked in in fourth place at the moment. He has a, a different attitude to training from a lot of people, doesn't he, Will? Out into the lead at the moment goes Pete Worth, but still not a significant break. Well, training it differs a lot from other people, and it's important that other skaters in our country don't try to follow his lead. He specialises very much in high-quality work, anaerobic work, that uh, other skaters and maybe even other athletes couldn't compete with. It's just something he's found over the years worked best for him. Well, Pete Worth has made the break now with 18 to go. He's opened up a 10, 15-metre gap, but the others look totally unconcerned. Yeah, it, it only matters once he gets over that half-lap stage. Once he's half a lap ahead, then he's got a chance of catching them up, but... I don't think they'll let him get that far this time. Julian isn't the type of person to let a gap like develop. Yes, Julian Green from Birmingham in yellow in second place. O'Reilly right at the back now. Pretty nonchalant, but he's been through this so many times before and inevitably he comes out the winner. Ellis is skating well in here. You see he's conserving all his energy. He's trained once a week with O'Reilly all this year, travelling through to Birmingham, and it's paying off. He's a much more relaxed, confident skater. He stands easily on his skates, he glides well. That's Ian Ellis from Nottingham in green. Would you say he's going to be O'Reilly's main competitor over the next few years in Britain? Along with the three juniors that are coming up, yes. I think we have the nucleus of a great team for the 92 Olympics. So, Pete Worth then, just about halfway through, just over halfway through, still that 12, 15 metre gap. Julian Green in second place, O'Reilly right at the back. Stuart Horsepool not showing at the moment in blue, just in front of O'Reilly, and those two will be watching each other, no doubt. I don't think Horsepool's enjoying this. His training's been curtailed this year through business involvement, and uh, 3,000 is a long way. He hasn't been training for this kind of distance. So without any perceivable effort, they've overtaken Pete Worth and left him struggling along. Ten laps to go. Green first, then Ian Ellis, then Stuart Horsepool, and then at the back, Wilf O'Reilly. 
I think it's all building up to O'Reilly going a few laps out, but I think Ellis this time is going to try and stay closer to him and try and pip him in the last lap. I don't think he'll manage it, to be honest, but I'd like to see him have the real go this time. And Stuart Horsball standing up there, looking as if he just needed a breather. It's quite tiring there, being down in that crouch. Yeah, plus Stuart's got a back problem, and staying down that long does tend to tighten up his back, so he likes to try and relieve it as much as possible. He's still a great skater, though, and it's good to see him fighting for the title still. Thought he'd retired last year. Well, I think Stuart's going to be one of these guys that'll keep retiring every year. He won't be able to leave the sport. He's far too good and far too important to it. Coming round with six to go, and the order hasn't changed significantly. Still in front, Julian Green. Then Ian Ellis. Stuart Horsepool moves into second. And is Horsepool going to make his move now? O'Reilly, covering all the time, moves up on the inside. O'Reilly just edging out Ellis there, using his experience just to move him out without doing anything illegal. Julian Green. Here comes O'Reilly. Just tucked in on the inside. Ian Ellis making his move now. Is more this the final move from Ellis? I think so. I think he's trying to be more positive, give himself a better chance at attacking O'Reilly when he comes. O'Reilly will move into the lead. But Ellis will try and stay with him this time. Moving round then with two to go, and it's Ian Ellis from Nottingham in green. But there goes O'Reilly. O'Reilly takes the lead with two to go. O'Reilly first. Now Horsepool makes his move. But they're all following as they usually do, this great Olympic champion. Into the last lap, and it's O'Reilly first. Ellis second, Horsepool third. The British record, well gone. It's been a comfortable race. And now O'Reilly being pressed, though, by Ian Ellis. That was desperately close. Just a yard for O'Reilly. Ian Ellis second, Horsepool third. But I was surprised, Archie, it was so close. Yeah, Ian's been training hard all this year, and he's really started to get the conference to have a go at O'Reilly, and I'm really pleased to see that. Willie will be pleased just to beat him because he knows it was close. O'Reilly was tired there. He felt the pressure in that race. You see it here, Willie moving through. Look at the power. He just strides out and pushes himself through. Ian left the gap that he shouldn't, and Willie took advantage of it. But now Ian's got to tuck in and get back at him, which he did very well. He just doesn't have the strength yet to beat Willie. And Horsepool now making his move to try and attack Ian Ellis. But it was a fruitless task. And applause raining down for this fantastic skater from Birmingham, Wilf O'Reilly. Ellis just trying to close in here on O'Reilly, but Willie's just got too much strength for him. But as we see, when he comes out the last corner, Ellis makes a final bid to get through and almost gets it. Maybe I'll come back next year and do it. And round the final bend, I think O'Reilly would have been a little surprised here at the way that Ellis came through and attacked him. Really throws in a last effort here and only beaten by about a metre. But uh, O'Reilly wins for the seventh time. Pretty confident. And uh, takes five points from the 3,000 metres, Ian Ellis takes three, Stuart Horsepool two, and Julian Green takes one. So overall, O'Reilly, a clean sweep. All four events, five points from each, he has 20. Stuart Horsepool nine, Ian Ellis eight, and Julian Green has four. So, Courtney Jones, Chairman and President of the National Skating Association, so Wilf congratulates Stuart Wilf O'Reilly. Stuart Horsepool, runner-up yet again. He must be getting pretty used to that. Skate Electric. Thank you. I wonder if we'll see him again next year. Could be. He and O'Reilly, a lot of admiration for each other. And here's Ian Ellis. Third place for him. And he could well be the man to take over the mantle when and if O'Reilly ever throws it down. A rally champion for the seventh hand, successive for the time. We're looking there at one of the finest sportsmen in Great Britain. 23 years old from Birmingham, Wilf O'Reilly, British ice speed champion, seven times in succession. How close was it? It looked close. Very close indeed, Simon. I think Ian skating an exceptional, exceptionally good race, and I was just glad I came out the winner.
and there was a bit of a problem it seemed in the 1000 uh, talk us through it. a couple of laps to go i think it was well I, I broke and got clear of the pack and then i just lost concentration for that split second and as with this sport split second loss of concentration you can fall over which i nearly did how do you feel relieved excited to have won for the seventh time excited as as excited as i could be for having won it for the seventh time None of them are ever easy, and they always get more, more difficult as the years go on. I don't think they ever get easier. But, uh, yeah, it's a really good, really good competition Sky Electric have put on, and I just hope they continue their sponsorship. It's been a heck of a day for you, quarterfinals, semifinals, four finals. How shattered are you? Really shattered. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's uh, when you hear about athletes complaining about they've had one race today and you know this just puts it all back into perspective when you when you i've raced nine races today which is a very tough schedule right now we go forward to the world championships in england exciting enough you go in as olympic champions you go in as favorite i would have thought so i mean home rink home crowd i think the pressure can work either way it can work as a, as a disadvantage or it can work an advantage